Alright then gang, so now what we're doing is we're grabbing all of the workouts, right? And for each one, we're outputting the workout details component, which is listing all of the information for that workout. So what I'd like to do now is create a form that's going to go on the homepage as well. And when we fill out that form and press submit, it's going to add a new workout. So we're going to create a new component for this. So I'm going to place this inside the components folder and I'm going to call it workouts form.js. All right then, so inside here, we need to create a new component. So const workout form is gonna be equal to a function, spell that correctly, form not former. All right, and inside this function, we need to return some kind of template. All right, so let's first of all do the template, then we'll come to the logic of handling the form. So what I'm gonna do, in fact, what I'm gonna do is create some state first of all, because we need to create state for each of the different properties of the new workout that a user's gonna type into this form. So that's the title, the load, and the reps. So let's create some state for each one. So const title and set title. Um, we're gonna set that equal to use state. I'm gonna click on this to auto import it at the top. And the initial value for that is gonna be an empty string. So I'm gonna duplicate this a couple of times and I'll change this right here from title to load. And this is gonna be set load as well. And then down here, this is going to be reps. And this is gonna be set reps. All right, so we have these three pieces of state now. We need to create a form with three input fields, and when a user types into those input fields, it's gonna update the state for that particular field. So let's create now a form. So form, and I'm gonna give this a class name as well of create, and press tab. We can get rid of the action, we don't need that. Okay, so inside the form, I'll do an H3 as a title to say add a new workouts and then the first field I want to do is for the exercise title so let's do a label get rid of HTML4 and we'll say exercise title like so all right so we need an input for that as well and the type of that is going to be text what I'm going to do is format this so each attribute is on a different line just so it doesn't go way off the screen over here so the type is going to be text the value, or rather we'll do on change first of all. So this is when a user types into the field. It's gonna fire a function at that point, and we're gonna take in the event object as well. And what we want to do when a user types into this field is basically call this set title function right here. So let's say set title, and we want to set the title to be E dot target, which is the event target, in this case, the input field that they're typing in, and then the value of that. So dot value like so. And also we wanna set up this two-way data binding. So we set the value of the input to be the title state right here. So if this changes from outside of the form, from some kind of function later on, for example, if I reset the form and we change it back to an empty string, then that change is gonna be reflected in this input as well. All right, so that's the first one done. What I'm gonna do is copy that, and I'm gonna paste it down here for the second one. So this time around, the label is gonna be the load. So we'll say load, and then in brackets, in kg, in kilograms. Okay, so now the type of this needs to be a number, so they can only input numbers and not letters. And then what we want to do is use the set load function right here instead of set title and the value is going to be load as well all right so the third one is going to be for the reps so let me copy that and paste it down here and not done it all let me do that again copy this paste it here all right so this time it's for the number of reps and again it's going to be number this should be set reps and this should be reps all right and then finally we just need a button at the bottom to submit this that says add workout all right 
So we have this form and we're tracking basically what a user is typing into that form. And we're storing all of those bits of information in this state right here. Now we also want to tack on some kind of on submit handler to the form so that when they click the button, the form submitted, we fire a function. So let's say on submit, and we need to set that equal to some kind of function. And I'm gonna call the function handle submit. And we're gonna create that function up here now. So we'll say const handle submit is equal to an async function because we're going to reach out to the API. We're taking the event object as well. And then inside the function, the first thing we want to do is prevent the default action of the form being submitted. Now, normally the default action is to refresh the page. We don't want that to happen. So we can prevent that by saying e.prevent default like so. All right, so the next thing I want to do is create some kind of dummy workout object that we're going to send as the body of the request. So I'm going to say const workout is equal to an object and we're going to pass in the title, the load and also the reps. All right, let's spell this correctly. I cannot spell. Okay, so now we want to use the fetch API to send a post request. So I can say const response is equal to await and we're gonna await a fetch request. Now to do a post request, if we go to the back end and then go to the routes, let's go in here. So dot post is just to forward slash, but remember if we open up the server file, we have to use this path first of all. So it's just to forward slash API forward slash workouts. That's where we send the post request to. So let's say forward slash API forward slash workouts like so. So that's where the post request is going to. The second argument is an object with some options and we can specify the method, which is going to be a post request. And then after that, we want a body property to send this thing right here, the workout, but we can't just send the workout as an object. We have to turn it into JSON. So to do that, we can say JSON dot stringify and then pass in the workout object. And this changes this into a JSON string and sends that as the body. And then finally, we need a headers property to say that the content type is going to be JSON. So the property is content type like so. And right here we say application forward slash JSON like so. All right, so that is there, the fetch request to post the new data. Now what I'm gonna do is down here, say const JSON is equal to await response, which is this thing right here, the response we get back dot JSON. Because remember, when we send a post request and we handle that up here, if I go to the workout controller and go to create workout, this is the function we fire in response to a post request. If it's a success, then we return this JSON, the workout that we just added. And if it's not a success, then we send this JSON right here, an error message. So either way, we're getting JSON back and we're storing that now inside this constant. Now, what I'd like to do is a little live check right here to see if the response was okay. So if it's not okay, so exclamation mark, first of all, so if we get some kind of error back, then I want to basically update some kind of error on the form. Now to do that, we're gonna have some states. So let me duplicate this and change this to error and this to set error. And then to begin with, it's gonna be null. Now, if we get an error back, so if the response is not okay, then I wanna update that state. So I wanna say set error and the error is gonna be the JSON and then the dot error property. Remember, if we open up that controller again, we have an error property. So that's gonna be the error. Now, if the response was okay, then we want to do something different. So I'm gonna do another if check to say, if response dot okay, then this time I want to set the error to be null in case there was one previously. So set error null like so. And I'm gonna say console dot log new workout added just so we can see in the console and output the JSON. Now there's one more thing I want to do as well, and that is to reset the form. So I'm gonna reset all of these things back to an empty string. So if I want to add another one in again, then I don't have to delete what's already in there. So let me reset all of those as well. So set title 
and that's going to be an empty string and then set the load which is going to be an empty string and then finally set the reps which is going to be an empty string as well all right so i think that is pretty much it it's not going to be styled yet but the functionality should be there so let's save that and preview. In fact, before we do that, I've just realized we've created this component, but it's just sitting out there in the ether. It's not doing anything. So we need to export it from this file and then we need to use it inside the homepage. So we'll say down here, export default, and it's called workout form like so. Then go to the homepage, we need to import it. So I'm gonna duplicate that, double click this and this and change that to workout form that we're importing and then down here after this workout div right here we're going to output the workout form like so so that's all there is to it hopefully this is going to work i'm going to open up the terminal to see if there's any errors and there is it says repunce is not defined and console is not defined of course they're not let's go back to the workout form and just see what's going on so it should be console there and response where do we use that let's have a look uh, workouts and there's response ah response there we go so that should all be working now and in fact you know what I'm gonna do before we preview this I'm gonna output the error if there is one so you know like we set the error right here to null or set the error to be the error message that we get back I'd like to output that so that we can see down here if there is an error. So I'm gonna say error, and then double ampersand, and then we'll output a div if there is, and that div is gonna have a class name actually. So class name is equal to error, so we can style it later. And then inside here, we can output the error state if there is one. All right, so now let's try this out in a browser. Okay, so now we can see that form over here looking absolutely pants but we will style it shortly. I just wanna make sure that the functionality is working. So I've got the console open down here because we log out a message to the console if there is a success. And also we should see the error on the form if there is an error. So the exercise title, let's say arm curls like so. And we'll say in kilograms, the load is gonna be, I don't know, 15 kilograms. And then what I'm gonna do is actually leave this blank for now so we get an error. I'm gonna try adding the workout. And you can see we get an error down here. And also it says workout validation failed and basically reps is required. Now we're gonna send back a better message later on, a better error message than this, but at least that's working. Let's say for reps 15 and I'm gonna add that workout. Now what do you think is gonna happen? Well, let's see, let's add the workout and it's been added. We can see new workout was added. We get the workout object back with the ID and the timestamp as well. And this has been cleared, but we don't see it over here. And why is that? Well, it's because we already fetched the data when the page first loaded. And just because we've added a new document, we don't then refetch the data magically. It doesn't work like that. So what we could do is we could refresh the page and now we see that extra exercise. Now we are gonna combat this later by using some local state using React context. But for now, if we add a new workout, we have to refresh the page so that we refetch the data when the component first renders, okay? So it is all working. Let's now also style this so it looks a bit better. All right, so let's open up the index.css file and I'm gonna paste these because I've already copied them from the course files, the GitHub repo, remember, you can grab that if you like, the link is down below. So we have these new extra styles down here. I'll quickly go through them. For any labels and inputs, we display those as block. For inputs, we say the padding is 10 pixels, give it a bit of margin top and bottom. The width is 100%, um, a border of a light gray color, border radius of four pixels and the box sizing is border box. Then for the button inside the form, the submit button that is, we have a background of the primary color, which is that greenish color. We strip away the border. The color of the text is white, some padding. The font family is poppins, border radius, and we say cursor pointer. And then finally, the error div at the bottom of the form, we say padding 10 pixels. The background is kind of like a pinky color. The border is the error variable. That's kind of like a pinky red. 
the color of the text is also the error variable. The border radius four pixels and the margin top and bottom is 20 pixels, left and right zero. So let's save this and see if it looks any better. And there we go, my friends, that's looking a lot better now. So let's just try doing another exercise. I'm gonna say bench, press, and then load in kilograms, we'll say like 25 kg. And I'm gonna add the workout just to see what the error looks like. So add, yep, that looks a lot better as well. So reps, we're just gonna put in 10 reps and then add the workout again. We get rid of all that stuff, the error's gone and all these things have gone inside here, but we don't see the exercise over here until we refresh and refetch the data. So this is all working, but we wanna address this issue now so that we don't have to refresh the page to see a new workout when it's been added. When it's been added, it should automatically appear at the top. And to do that, we're gonna have to update the local state to keep it in sync with the database and we'll be using React Context in the next lesson to do that.